Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is Asim here, and it's been a long time since I made any video, and yeah, now a lot has been going on. So yeah, now I am back, and here it is dependency confusion. As a lot of people had asked me about this on the Telegram channel, and on base of the poll, it's there. So. uh folks also asked me to show the setup of the registries and the things that i am going to do setup of that for testing this dependency confusion so for keeping that also in mind i have like split this into two parts of the video so the first part of the video i would try to like cover these things like the first uh, eight part first eight thing so we would set up a private npm registry we would create an npm package you create a node project and you would oh, like create everything that's required for the exploit to work and the second part of the video i would show the actual exploit that how this particular dependency confusion attack worked and how we are going to like uh, do a post exploitation and how we are weaponizing that to run on our own code whenever the npm package is being installed and a summary of it as to how you would go on finding it in real life so if if you are already familiar with npm packages private repositories and such so you could skip this first part and straight away go to the second part otherwise if you are a little bit unsure make sure you watch this video till the end and only then you proceed with the second part so yeah first question is what are packages and dependencies so here is the article from the researcher and to understand this i have created some of the questions and uh, answering those would help you understand this article and what is the attack all about so first is what are packages and dependencies so you might have seen that this pip install and then the package name once you do like a python code you write a python code you install some dependencies or some packages like let me show you so like this is my python uh, terminal here so i am doing an import json then i am doing import request and request dot get and my website so i get a response 200 so these requests and json these are all packages and what they do is they add a lot of functionality which is ready to use so that you don't have to uh, like again write the same code for that like uh, request library has this get function which i can directly call to do a get request get http get request so instead of writing the whole low level code to do a http request i just write request dot get that is all possible because i had this package installed that was request so same goes for other like environments like instead of python if you are using node so node is a javascript runtime environment and uh, basically you can write back end code in javascript using that so it has a lot of packages there on its public repository so i would be talking about that as well so the second question that comes is what are dependencies so uh, if i write a code that requires this request library so that's a dependency for my basically for my project so let me show you one so let's say you are using this dir search uh, python tool so it it would have its own set of dependency or modules that it would be dependent upon so if you go to this requirements.txt so in python projects usually the requirements.txt is a file that holds uh, all the modules and the version names that's required by the particular project so here and in this example their search requires this certify model module sharded module url3 and then here is the version so less than equal to 1.24.3 the cryptography module should be greater than 2.8 let's take another example so here is this sublister uh, python tool you might have used it for subdomain enumeration so if you go to its requirements.txt you would find that it has this three modules arc parse dns python and the request library so it doesn't mention any module so mama so it doesn't mention any version name so that means that any version would be fine so if you type pip install hyphen r requirements.txt like that's the way to install requirements from a file so if you do that it would fetch the latest module like the version the latest version that's there on the python package website and it would install it onto your local machine so that's basically dependencies let's come back to this so what are different packages managers so as i already mentioned that pip install and then npm 
so that comes as a natural question what is this pip and what is npm so for installing these packages like the way you install libraries onto your uh, ubuntu machine is like apt get something right or if you have a uh, mac os you install it you, if you install it using homebrew you type do you install and whatever the package name is for windows you directly download the exe and install that same way for these packages to be installed for particular uh, uh, languages like for python there is this pip which is python uh, package manager for a node it is npm uh, npm is for node package manager so these are there and npm has a public registry which is the, this is the public registry npm js same way for python it is pypy so you might have used it for ruby it's ruby gems so these are different like different programming languages have different package managers for themselves now the next question which i already talked that registry so public and private registry so public registry as i already told like there's this npm js which has a lot of packages public packages which you could download it there's a private package also but for that you need to pay you could host your own private repositories as well similarly there is this python package manager which like python has a public repository pypy so for pypy there, there's a lot of modules there like the request library that we showed that is also installed from there itself so the second thing is so these are all public library public registries so private registries are where you host your private uh, created modules and the natural question that might come to your mind is why why would someone create a private registry right so what happens is a uh, lot of companies they create their own modules which are consumed in house and to consume these in house so they they don't want these to be publicly available because that's their proprietary code so they host these uh, packages on their own private registries one of the common popular open source like hosting library or registries were dashio or dashio i am not sure the correct pronunciation of that but yeah it's a zero config required local private npm registry and in the later part of this video i would be also showing how we could set this up and upload a private npm package on it which would be similar to what company does and companies do in the real life so that's that's the difference between private and public registries and why people use that now let's set up a basic node project so we are, we are setting up a basic node project so that i could make you understand what this package.json file is so uh, let, let's talk a bit about this article so we'd we'll be going to and fro from the article then to the actual contents and then talk about all those stuff so let's uh, let's come back to this article so here the researcher mentioned that uh, they were trying to hack paper during summer of 2020 which was last year and Justin Gardner a fellow researcher he shared an interesting bit of node.js source code that he found on github so uh, node.js source code usually has package.json and that's why i wanted to create a basic node package a uh, node.js package and then show you how uh, what a package.json file is and the different things that there so we would come to that let's talk a bit more about this so package.json doesn't contain anything sensitive inherently like it doesn't have any keys or uh, secret passwords or hash strings and such it just has this different module names like we saw here in the requirements.txt it's the same thing for a node node a project so for python project it's requirements.txt for a node project it's package.json which has different keys one of the keys is dependencies so uh, like let's see an example here so this is the node hello project and node hello project is basically a hello world application written in node.js so here is the package.json file for it so if you could see it here uh okay i've zoomed it a bit so the name of the package so this is the package.json for node hello so name of the package it's node hello Uh, and, and by package i mean so any application that you write it's basically a package so that's why i'm saying so not only the things that's present on the npm registry but if you make your own project those are also packages and you could well uh, upload it on npm as well so yeah so the name of this package is node hello version number is 1.0.0 description is blank uh, main file is index.js uh, for python the analogy would be the main.py file that's there scripts so these are the basically the commands so there's a shorthand for it so if you just write npm start this whole command would get executed 
repository what's the type of repository the url if you have any keywords author name the licensing type where you could report the bug and the home page of this so let's create our own repository here um uh, sorry let's create our own uh, node package here cd my app so all you have to do is just do npm minute and uh, creating or setting up npm i have left it out from the video you could well away google it there package name my app version description entry point test command get repo author let's say assume okay license it asks uh, it's about to write all these details into package.json yes do that now let's see so we have this only package.json file here so yeah now we have a basic package or node program ready so every node program must have a package.json which uh, directs the npm what what are different dependencies and what are different scripts that's the, the author license and everything that that's there so let's come back to this so we have set up a basic node project now let's install a public dependency into it so let's say i want to install this express.js so here's the command you just go onto this you click here you paste it here sorry oh you copy it here uh, it should i'm not sure why it's not copying let let me just uh, write it here npm my express so i is basically a shorthand for install so what it would do is it would get the express js from the public repository the npm js and then it would install it locally into this uh, folder so it would create a uh, node modules and also add it into the dependencies so if i do ls hyphen ls so you could see that there is this node module and if i do cat package.json you could see that there is this dependencies key that has been added and it contains this express module so this version is also mentioned there is this tag there is this tilde operator those have their use cases but basically this is the version so that's there so now we have installed a public package from there now let's talk about setting up a private registry so why i am doing this it would come a bit later in this video but let's first set up a public uh, private registry for hosting our private npm packages so we are going to set up our dash here for this it's fairly easy to install uh, and to install hyphen hyphen global so i have added hyphen hyphen global because i want to run it global like i want to install it global like in the express case here when i did npm my express i didn't want it to be installed globally rather only in this particular folder and that's why there was this mode node modules thing that was created because the express js is installed only in this particular folder and it it kind of you could you could think it as analogous to a virtual environment kind of thing so by default if you don't give a global tag it would install it locally and they would install that particular package locally now let's let's see so to start our dash you just have to run the our dash you command so let's do this uh, now it's running on localhost 4873 i think i already have it up here so oh, this one so yeah so this was an internal but this was a test thing that i <laughs> published it it was some time back so we have this up and running now let's see what are different things that we have to do now let's we have to add a user because um, once you add a user only then you can push packages to it so let me go to this terminal any other terminal npm add user it would ask for username let's say c password i would add any password here email as@as.com logged in as a c now what i can do is now i can just publish my package here but first before publishing i need to have a package ready right now let's create and publish an npm package so let's let's suppose we have this package internal package for hs so we have this internal package for hs we do npm in it and yeah Okay, got this one. So I have this package ready. Now just to publish it, I just have to do this npm publish. 
iPhone iPhone registry I mentioned because I want to publish it on this particular registry the internal registry and not if I don't mention the iPhone iPhone registry it would automatically get published to the global registry that's npm js only but the prerequisite is that I should have been logged in as a user onto that so I would also show how to publish packages on that because that's a prerequisite for understanding this attack so right now I have this published on my uh, private npm registry so there is this should be internal package for hs so no readme has been found no dependencies version 1.0.0 so yeah that's it so that's how you publish a private npm package now let's try to install this on npm package so after i've done this i would explain why why this is required this whole thing is required so that yeah so to install it, I think there's this command, yeah. To install it, first we need to specify. So, so this is my my app folder. I want to install this package here and then install. And what was the package name? Internal package for HS. So yeah, so I have to do this. So let's say I don't add this config registry thing here. I let's say I skip this npm install so what it would do is it would try to fetch this particular name from the public registry but on the public registry it doesn't find this there so it would fail and you could see that 404 not found because there was no package with the name internal package for hs on the public registry npm js to confirm it let me show you here as well uh, is that? okay so internal package for HS. So let's see this. I think I did a typo. I just I missed. I spelled an L. I skipped an L, but that that doesn't matter. So what I would do is to install it from the private repository because this my app is a like is a let's say it's a company project which I'm working internally for the company, and this particular module is required by it. So for that, what I would do is I would add this tag here now it would try to fetch this particular registry like its dependency from the local registry and as you could see it has been installed and if i show you here in the dependencies you could see that this is installed here right so that's all fine now so now we have this basic setup here so we have a we have a private registry setup we have a published package on the private registry we have that private package installed on our uh, basic node project. Now let's come back to the article again and then understand what the dependency confusion attack is. So yeah, on to the next part. And the next part I will be talking about this dependency confusion and why this is these all setup was required. So yeah, stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed this part.